Hello beauties. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Today's topic of discussion is on heartbreak, poetry, and post-trauma. And I can't wait to introduce this guest speaker, the beautiful, beautiful Queen Liberati is going to be joining me. And I just re-emphasize that the topic of the hour is on heartbreak, poetry, and post-trauma. So in between the breaths, she's going to spit some bars for us. She is amazing. And I just had to have her on this show. So without further ado, <laughs> come on in. I see you. Can you uh, request yourself or shall I try come and get ya? Let's see. Okay. Now, I hope, because sometimes when people try to, here we go. There we go, girl. This is today, oh my God. Hi, baby. Hello. Hello. You look so beautiful. Yes, Washington. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? I'm blessed to be alive. Thank you so much for having me here. Isn't that the truth? Well, welcome, welcome. Can you hear me? Or is there a second? Is there a couple of seconds delay? Can you hear me clearly? I hear you clearly. Superb. Okay. Hi, guys. Can you hear us clearly? Send us some more love hearts, emojis, love thumbs up, and everything. <laughs> yeah? All right. We know that we are connected. <laughs> oh, thank you. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Yes. All right, guys. So we have the Miss uh, Liberati with us. We know that we are across seas connecting. So every now and again, all kind of this connection might happen. We're going to repeat that. Okay. The live's going to go great. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let me pretend I'm burning some sage and they're going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So before we get into the juice and the layers of the, of, of the topic of the hour, Tell me a bit about how you spent your day today leading up to this, this talk tonight. And to be quite very honest, because I'm an insomniac, I was resting, oh. honestly, because I go to sleep really early in the morning because I do all of my wow. writings and everything, lives in the nighttime, trying to edify people, making my little vlog and, you know, doing my YouTube at night. So I was really trying to rest. And I, I woke up like around 8, and then I got up, and then I went back to bed around like maybe 11, being honest. Mm. And then I, I told them, please wake me up at 12.30 because I cannot miss this. I cannot miss this. But in my dream, <laughs> I'm dreaming of the whole thing, and the number 111 <laughs> came up. 111. What does that mean for you? It's angel numbers, you know what I mean? Mm. Angel numbers mean, and they all sound the same, but you're on the correct path. You're okay. on the correct path. And so I feel blessed to be on this path with you. Thank you so much for one on one poetry, Mr. Washington, who has really blessed us to come. A hundred percent. Big up, Mr. AKA Handsome, Mr. Washington. Amazing. He brought you into my world, and I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to speak with you. And I woke up at 11. That's amazing. Okay, so that's how you spent your day. Now, I do something called the warm-up zone, and that's just asking um, a few questions that will ha you know, have us both loosen up and this soul connect, yeah? Very okay. informally, so you ready for that? Let's go. <laughs> so the first question is, who is Miss Queen Lib? Queen Liberati is birthed out of rejection. Out of you're the realist. Hiding, Go on. Out of being a shrunken violet. Shirley is my name, which means bright clearing. So Queen Liberati has come so that Shirley could emerge to be who mm. she's supposed to be. Liberati means 
is a derivative. I created Liberati, but it comes from liberation. Free, no shackles binding me. Free to be me is the definition that I made up for that name. Queen Liberati, free to be me in all her hues and all her many facets. Okay, so let me just take a minute. Um, I don't know if I've got enough fingers and toes, but we're going to try. Can I tell you why I'm giving you that? Can I? Uh, yeah, take a moment. It's a question I ask everyone. It's secretly a trick question. Wow. Yeah? And most people, and I mean literally 98, will say, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm a barrister, I'm a writer, I'm a poet. Is that who you are or is that what you do? You never gave me any handles. You went into the soul of who you really are. So even about the mic, the looks, the, the role, the masters, that's who you are. Do you yes, understand? You yes, know yourself. That you answer tells you know yourself. And that's why I applauded you. I thank you so much. It took a long time to, 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 to tap into that. To tap into that because you, you know, know yourself. Of what you've studied, none of that makes you you. It's actually this attachment that we've attached, you know, another yeah. label to. So that was such a beautiful and real and raw response. All right. So my second question of the hour is, um, what was you like as a child? I was always a free spirit that they tried to curb her enthusiasm. Always a free spirit. And it's funny, I was thinking of these things that you might ask me. I've been a nervous wreck. Since yesterday. Yo, you know what? You could have just played some of my other previous shows. You would have got a good inkling then. Girl, you put yourself through a hole. I was thinking to myself in the bathroom, <laughs> and I said to myself, I was running around at like maybe five years old in kindergarten without a shirt on with the boys. <laughs> Even though I, I, knew I, was a girl. I knew I was a girl, but I'm like, if they could do it, why can't I? <laughs> oh, just a free spirit, you know, just not mm. not being allowed to exude that, you know. You know, you have to curtail it, and you have to know when to allow yourself to be free because there is normalcy. There are things that we have Absolutely. to follow, but at the same time, fly if you want to. Fly. All fly. right. So, in the midst of this warm up question, before we get into the conversation, um, what's your? As we're talking about childhood, what's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, wow. My favorite childhood memory has to be me and my mom and my sisters and brothers. Because my mom mm -hmm. was sick a lot of, sick for a lot of the time that I was growing up. Um, and okay. I saw her running in the park. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but that was my most amazing memory because she's running in the park with us. But it's just not even about running with us. I saw my mom running. Running. In the park. Oh, and that's one of your favorite memories. My favorite memory is her running in the park, being free to be her. Mm. Yes. So do you have a bucket list? If so, tell me at least one of the things that you would like to do before, no time too soon, but before we, you know. Mm -hmm. Lower the casket. Before I lower the casket, <laughs> they lower my casket, I'd love to be able to motivate people in other countries. I'd love to Hello. talk to young little girl. Hello. A UK, here I come. <laughs> come and see me. You and your I'm daughter, come coming. see me. Yeah, I'm okay. Coming. Okay. So that's what you'd like to do. All right. I'm and um, someone else to live in Jamaica before they lower that casket job. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, if you were to choose two celebrities to have dinner with at two separate times or even together if you like, who would you choose? Well, Michael Jackson, rest in peace. Love him, Michael. Um, Michael? Mm -hmm. And honestly, right about now, because I'm into the reggae movement, the dance hall movement, I'd like to pick the brain. And I love all of them. I love all of them. I love the Afro beat. I love the dance hall. And I, oh, me too. I crush on, but Popcon, I'd love to have dinner with Popcon. Really? Because I love the fact that that he weaves in spirituality and all of the stuff that he's saying, you can still sense the heartbeat of the Lord, the heartbeat of God in there. Like, yeah, I'm doing this, but I don't forget my roots. I would love to just sit with him and just pick at the brain. See and this vibe. You see, this is the reason why we mustn't judge a book by its cover, because I thought he was going to be like Jill Scott. 
I don't know why you give me that vibe, you know? I but love hey, Jill you, Scott. I, I love Jill. Bless up to Jill Scott because I love Jill Scott. She's one of my favorites. I got that vibe from you, like Jill and I so you like a Jill. bit. Okay, so we need to fly to JA then, right? I, I, I need to fly right now. You, you, you. you yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you for sharing that warm up zone with us. And before we get into it, let me just um, share a little bit with the audience. Hi guys, welcome. Share this post, please. We're about to start the dialogue, the topic of the hour, which is heartbreak, poetry, and post-trauma. I'm not going to stop the flow in order to read comments, but we will take a moment in between to make sure we attend to you. Okay, so recline your chairs and get your, your wine and stuff or your reefers, and let's make it happen. <laughs> let's get into it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, girls, so listen. Um, firstly, let me tell the audience where I met you. I was on Instagram, mining uh, Instagram's business, as you do. <laughs> and I was on Mr. Washington's page. Um, he's also a previous guest not so long ago. He was amazing. And I came across, <laughs> yeah, I came across this woman right here. And I'm like, is she serious? Is she, this woman's style of projection and poetry and personality and essence just blew me all the way back. And I was like, you know what? In her inbox, I've got to have her on here straight away. So I think you're amazing. I had to have you as a guest. So thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. Yeah, let's thank get you, into man. it. Thank you so much, Queen. Thank you. Yeah, such a beautiful soul. So um, heartbreak, um, poetry, and post-trauma. Let's start with the heartbreak. When you, when you birth that word in your mind, heartbreak, what's the first thing that comes to you in your journey? Let's get into it. Wow. Heartbreak for me is... And though me and my father, I know my father loves me, but he didn't raise me. Mm -hmm. And he raised a whole different family. I know he loves me underneath it and I've forgiven him, but that's my first heartbreak because I look like that man from head to toe. The shape mm -hmm. of my nose, the fullness of my lips, the depth mm -hmm. of my eyes belong to him. And so not having him there to protect me through all the other traumas. Mm -hmm. He was my first covering and protection, and he wasn't there, though I forgive him, and I don't mean this to hurt him, but I'm going to be honest and candid with my truth. He was mm -hmm. my first heartbreak, because I was the first person that was supposed to cover so, me. OK, so you, you, so um, did you spend a, a, any amount of um, quality time with him? Let's start there. When I was a little girl, I have like, you know, a few memories of my dad, a few mm -hmm. memories of us. And they're beautiful memories and then some not so beautiful. But mm -hmm. I remember just sitting on his lap, getting little car uh, lessons. I was sitting on his lap and I can't talk oh. with the right now, but I was driving his little car. You know, he was doing the driving, but I was doing the wheeling, you know? Mm -hmm. And those are my fondest memories. Um, mm -hmm. I remember I... I lifted my feet up from the ground to kick him. He said, never, <laughs> never do that. <laughs> Keep your foot on the ground. Never lift your foot up to kick a man. And I'll never forget that. What a memory. So when you say you have, you, you've forgiven him, um, does he know how his absence penetrated your life to this day? I think he thoroughly knows because I've made it a point to tell him. I remember calling him one time, I think around the time that I was getting a divorce mm. and my heart was shattered, you know, cause this is the time when I think you want to speak to someone that you hold high on a pedestal, mm. you know, and you're looking for that reassurance that Everything's going to be all right. Yes, you have your God and whatever you serve, but you want that human interaction with someone that you yeah. are in the fall that's going to say, you know what, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so I called him one day, and I think I just had a nervous breakdown calling him, and I was like, you know, it's all your fault, Daddy. Dad. So, okay, so let me get into a little bit of the layers, because what, what really pricked me when you said that um, was like, okay, though Dad was absent, and that really affected you, and I, I'm, you know, I, we all know how absence of any parent can affect, especially a young child at the time. Mm -hmm. With the other things we're gonna go into, because guys, stay with us, because we're gonna go into some layers tonight, okay? With the other things you went through, do you hold him responsible 
It sounds every, like every, every last one. Is is that a fist? Is that a fair emotion? I think it's the fairest though. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not looking for you to kill anyone. I'm not looking yeah. for you to hurt anyone. I'm looking for your shoulder to cry on. I'm looking on your lap to put my head on. I'm looking for you to hug me. I'm looking for you to mm -hmm. say you're beautiful nonetheless. I'm looking for you to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame him for the things that have taken place, but I blame him for his absence because in all the trauma that I've dealt with, if he were there, I feel the narrative would have been different. That's what I was going to ask, OK? What do you think the difference would have been if your dad was around, whether he was with your mother or not still, but just present and, and available to you? What would be the difference, would you say, in how your life would have been or played out? Wow. I think it'd be so different because I wouldn't be searching for him in every person. Mm. That's the real mm. deal. That's the real deal. That's the poignant truth that a lot of us women and a lot of young men and men till this day, we're looking for the absentee parent. I love mm -hmm. my mother. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. She carried mm -hmm. me. But the one that I was transferred from into her belly to carry out, mm -hmm. that person, the very reflection of him, mm -hmm. He's the glory. The Bible talks about it. I don't know who you serve. I'm not coming for nobody. I'm not telling nobody who to serve. But I believe in my God, and that's Jesus. And so when the Bible, it talks about how the, you see how when, look at our head wraps. Look at your little beautiful head wraps. You look beautiful. Gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous right? And with your hair, that's your glory. Women's hair is their glory, right? So mm. a father is the glory of children. So mm. how many of you are walking around without glory? How many young little boys and girls are walking around gloryless? They don't have self-esteem. Mm -hmm. They are not esteemed. A father swings them on a swing. Not that a mother doesn't count. She's, mm -hmm. She counts, but she cannot replace. Neither gender can replace. You just the make other. it work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when was the last time you saw dad or spoke to dad? Wow. I think I spoke to him earlier this year because I go back and forth with my mm -hmm. feelings. And I yeah. spoke to him earlier this year, and I and I and I forgave him again because I go through mm. that. And then I said I love him, and I'm sorry because he suffers. He's he's sick, and one thing I don't want is for him to pass on and mm. this way. So I try my best to acknowledge him as 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 who he is, and he did his best efforts. Mm -hmm. You know, not to hold him in contempt, give him mercy, because God has been gracious with me. I'm not perfect either. Mm -hmm. I've fallen short. May not be in that same situation, because we, we like to judge people because they sin differently. Yeah. And so I had to think of that, you know, be merciful to him, for I've been merciful to you. Mm -hmm. So I try to show him, extend him that mercy, because I would never want him to leave the earth. Yeah. This above our heads, you know. That's a beautiful thing. Well, before we go into the other elements of heartbreaking experiences, I'm gonna put a little something to you. Okay. Here's a pen. Mm -hmm. It's ready to write. What is the first few lines of the letter you wanna write your dad and what would you say? To my dad? Mm-hmm. I love you. That's it. I love you. Okay. Thank you, because without you, who am I? I? There would be none of this. I, 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 I've went through the pain, yes, but I'm more than mm -hmm. the pain. I'm more than the heartbreak. I'm more than the brokenness. I'm more than the rejection mm -hmm. and the abandonment. Who I am is not defined by those things. I am so much more than those things, and I mm -hmm. impact people even from a place of hurt. So yeah, absolutely, him, absolutely. Thank so you. you're saying thank the letter you. that you would send them if you had to put the first. Two lines or one, three words would be, I love you. I love you. Okay. Well, that's a beautiful um, sentiment to pause on. Uh, would you like to introduce your first poem? Because we're going to do a few tonight. Sure. You ready? Sure. Yeah. In between our, our conversation, guys, um, this woman's going to spit some bars. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, pull him out the bag, girl. What's the first piece you'd like to share with us tonight? Right, so the first piece I always share is my mission statement because without the mission statement, there is no poetry, there is no me. So 
here's to my mission statement. Mm -hmm. God kissed my lips with lyrics like the sun kissed the oranges. Mm. I'm an alien on this earth like the third world farming is. I live in this world, but I'm not of it. A pilgrim in this land, a soldier of the dunamis, ambassador of the one who ever lives. Christ, the one's dead and forever resurrected. I was born to spit. Cough up flows out of my esophagus. Make my trachea bleed, that's how hot it is. Created a spit like cockroaches and vultures eat the dead man's carcasses. My duty, my job, my purpose is to ignite and edify those of the edifice. Offer optimism to the pessimists. Set some light, expel the darkness, and ultimately show them who God is. Hit the street mm. with my poetry. Let every thug know me. Holla at your girl, homie. They rap a taste. I rap a meal and season it like my daddy showed me. They've got their flow, mad dough, and bling, bling. I've got real glow, my soul, and cling, cling. Cause I clung to the one who hung on a cursed tree to produce blessed flow through his blood flow for me. I'm coagulated. His blood flow got me jubilated. He's the wine and spirit that has me intoxicated. I sip it and wine, I gulp it. I'm a lush when it comes to the foolproof, the high potent. Drink is straight, no diluting it. Drunk, but not as you suppose. It's the spirit filled with his holy ghost, no confusing it. Filled with his holy ghost, no confusing it. Thank you so much for letting me speak. My mission statement. Nice oh. intro. <laughs> nice intro. That was nice. This woman is like a straight ready rapper. Like, who spits <laughs> poetry like that? Seriously, like, oh my god. I'm gonna put a lot I think the audience is quiet because they're just stunned, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some hearts in this box for you right now. Yeah. This woman is dope. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, your mission statement, is that what you call it? Yes. That's amazing. Thank wow. You. Well, feel free to sip some water. Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Share the post if you can. Yeah. We are still talking about the topic of the hour, heartbreak, poetry, and um, post-trauma. And we've just been speaking on elements about what your, you know, your rendition of your first sport heartbreak is. And you spoke about, you know, your, your relationship with your father. Um, and let's go into a little bit about even uh, the relationships you might have experienced um, in terms of heartache and heartbreak. What would you like to share on that note? Oh what comes goodness. to mind about your father then how that transcended into relationships? All of I like since I was a child, um, since I was a child, and then of course getting into romantic relationships. Um, I have five children all together, and mm -hmm. my first children's father I have two, so just being candid all the way, no, no holding back. Yeah, <clears throat> and my first children's father abandoned and neglected me, and though I forgive him as well, he doesn't really understand the levels and the magnitudes of what his abandonment left us. You know what may I, mean? I ask you, Rika, may I ask you a question? Whenever I heard the word, uh, there's a few words that when people mention, I'm always like, ping, 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 and one of them is abandonment. I'd love to ask, when you say he abandoned you, did he leave you as we are allowed to do things are not working out and we call it abandonment? Or did he just not respond for the children that he created? Because that's more, more important. Abandoned us. When I say so abandoned, that means you never, he never have supported you, never supported the children. Left us completely. So he went to go make a better life for us. He said, and he's on here. Hopefully, he's on here. And I love you nonetheless. But I'm going to be candid with my truth. Oh and yeah. So um, he left us. I was pregnant with our second child at 17, and he told me he was going to go make a better life for us in Pennsylvania, and that was 1994. And today is 2022. My oldest daughter, 29, my second daughter, mm -hmm. 27, never has he circled back. And then within those time frames, we've seen them maybe one or two times, three times, because they had to go to a funeral of a family member. And that was this. So he never officially had a sit down and had a separation or breakup. He just said he's going to make a better life. And then he just went ghost on you. That, that was it. And, you know, we've spoken since about those things, but the reality is you abandoned us because we didn't leave on bad terms. You didn't leave me to go. We didn't have a breakup. You got up and said you were going to do such and such, and you never came back. 
and that was that. So yes, we broke up after that, but you abandoned us. There's no, mm. there, there's no, there's no, oh, you know, he left me. No, you went to get a better life for us and you left us. I was pregnant with your second child. Mm. And there was never a return, 2022. 29 year old, 27 year old. What was life like um, as a single mother with two children at the age of 17? Oh, wow. Think, well, I just want to shed some light on some good things. I graduated, even though they thought I'd end up on crack cocaine. I graduated, and in my class, I was, I, they, you know, I wasn't a valedictorian, but I was the valedictorian in my class. Great. Mm -hmm. You know, with both my kids on my hip at 17, 18 mm -hmm. years old. And I did that with grace and elegance. You know, it was hard. We've been in the shelter system because of it, going through a lot of different things, so many different things took place with the, again, being uncovered, unprotected, mm -hmm. unwanted. Even if that's not your thoughts or your sentiments, the feeling and the impact of those mm -hmm. that you do leave. You know what I mean? Those are the things that we have to now struggle through and have ruminating in our minds as women, yeah. or our sons and daughters. I have five children. So the thoughts that they must have about not having the father present. You know, allow me to share, allow me to share a little bit of light, and I can't speak for your journey. It's, it's a beautiful thing that you're sharing it. Um, you know, God, where do I start with that? In terms of parenting, females or males, especially when you're young, we both had a child at 17. Yeah. I think when it comes to the struggle, which is very, very real, especially psychologically, money is just one thing, the psychological, the spirit, the emotional, and not everyone gets through it. Okay? Not everyone makes it. Exactly. I think it's paramount, because I cannot, again, let me, let me emphasize, speak for your journey. But I think it's paramount, and I will say this to everyone, that when we have children, no matter how much you're in love or whatever, I mean, I don't mean the mishaps when we have children, but no matter how much we are with somebody, I always say to women, in the back of your mind, in the pocket, deep down, make sure you're having that baby for you. And I don't yeah. care how this comes across to the viewers, because I need you to understand this. That's real talk. There's a lot of parents, and I'm going to do a topic at some point of um, teenage pregnancy and parenting, so feel free if you want to come and join that show. It'll inbox me. Um, there's a lot of parents and women, you know, women yeah. that's gone through the pain, the trauma, the abandonment. And when I ask them things like, what made you have the second child, the third child, the fifth child, the sixth child, and they look at me like, huh? And I'm like, when I knew that it was that deep, I stayed at one child. Did you, you, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, although life happens, we often, women do feel so abandoned. And, and I feel like, you know, we almost have children based on just the love. And there's nothing else going on in here, it's just the love. And sometimes when things go left, we do blame the other person. And in all honesty, when I had my baby at 17, I have never blamed anyone. I took 100% accountability. That's the God's no, honest truth. I, I blame myself. I take all yeah, You know what I mean? I can say, you know, I'm responsible up until one to six, and he's the father like, responsible from six to 29. But ultimately, as young as I was, I know that I was accountable. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but it feels even better. Accountability. In I accountability, accountability yeah. For everything that I've done within myself, my body. Yeah. And when it comes down to children, mm. my concept is this. I didn't make them out of hate. Oh, no. So they're they're no. here for a reason. Oh, That's my God, the yeah. the difference. For me, yeah. in my mind, who am I to now decide yeah. you're fake because he's not in my life? Yeah, you mm -hmm. left. I'm going to have your child. Whether you're here or not, she... That's my point. He That's my point. Has purpose. They all have purpose. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for allowing them to have this opportunity, sir. Because they will be great. Has he, ever said, has he ever given an explanation or even a, an elaboration on what happened? Like, what? Why did he go back on the plan? Like, what happened for him? Have you ever, have you ever had so a dialogue? So many different things have occurred, and we have had 
Okay. All I do is conversations. Okay. Be on conversations for me. Actions mm -hmm. speak louder than words. We're speaking right now. I could have mm -hmm. said I'm coming on your show and never showed up. Never cared yeah. to confirm. Never cared yeah. to even look back and circle back. But I'm sitting here because I yeah. take what you do seriously. So oh me my God. talking yeah. about it is not enough. Conversations are not enough. Picking up a phone, showing yourself whether you have a dollar in your pocket or not to the gym. Exactly. Ooh, consistency oh, and being solid is something I always talk to people about. If you ain't solid or consistent, it's like adios. 100%. Adios. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned going into shelters. Um, what, what led you to that part of um, your journey? I'm from upstate New York, Rockland County. Mm -hmm. um, I live in New York, Manhattan now. And mm -hmm. as a young mother of two, again, mm -hmm. I love my mother with every fiber of my being, but she's mm -hmm. mother seven. Yeah. And I wasn't going to allow her to mother me in front of my children. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want my children to get the voices mixed up. I'm your mother. Oh, wow. Okay. And I love my mother with every fiber of my being. She's an amazing woman. This is not to discredit my mother, but mm -hmm. they would have came through her if that was her thing. They came mm -hmm. through me. So I said, yeah. thing, I got to go because no one will mother these but me. I'm not, I, I, I love you, mom, but you can mother me over the phone. You can call mm -hmm. me, text me, girl, what you doing? What's wrong? You better get your life in order. But I don't want my kids to ever look and be like, me, that's my, no, grandma's, no, no, I'm your mom, me. If we yeah. struggle, we're going to struggle together. A hundred percent. Same here. We're going to make Same. it together. Whatever I go through, we're going to make it together. I'm your mom. Good or bad, yeah. I said, mommy ain't going nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. So we touched on in our like phone consultation very briefly, because I never like to know too much about the life. We touched on in terms of heartbreak, uh, like domestic violence. We've got to share elements of your journey with us and, and where it all began. What was the first sign that you saw and so forth? Say that again, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? You domestic violence, say it again. Yeah, I was saying in the midst of our, our brief dialogue that we had, before coming on here, we touched on domestic violence as a part of the heartbreak journey. Um, yes. How young were you when you first encountered that, 15, may I ask? 15. Oh, wow. He's a bubby. Baby, mm -hmm. getting beat with two mm -hmm. by fours in my stomach, being burnt with irons, <sighs> hair being pulled out of my scalp. Mm. How in that time did you deal with your emotions? I've always been stoic, I, I, I believe. God has always had me this stoic being. And I'm, mm. I think I'm hilarious. Everything is comedy for me. So he's given me the gift of comedy in my life. But, but is that not, I always think that's how people avoid the emotions when they laugh at everything. Do you know what I mean? I I'm, quite, I'm quite a giggly person, but also there's a time to have that real serious, you know. It's so, it's so serious, I laugh. Mm. It's so serious. I laugh because yeah, I get that. I get what you mean when you say that. I'm laughing. It's it's, mm. it's safer for all of us that I laugh. I'm laughing mm. because I'm oh. not dead. I'm not dead. Mm. What you intended you, what, for me? What may I ask? Me, what may you I ask? Store what, for me. Go on. You know, I'm sorry, but what you thought was going to be the end result is not. So I laugh. I yes, you mm. beat me pull my hair out, kick me in my stomach. Do you remember, I was going to ask what, that because that was the first time you remembered experiencing domestic violence. Do you remember at all what the conversation piece was and what evoked his behavior on that day? And we're not giving any justification for the behavior, but I'm intrigued to understand where he, what he was doing and why was, he did that. There was one time I was beat because I was talking about trauma. Yeah. Ooh. I talked about abuse. I talked about sexual mm -hmm. abuse. And I was mm -hmm. pregnant with my daughter. And I was kicked in my stomach. And again, I forgive you. I love you. God bless you. But these are my truths. So he done that because it, you triggered him somehow? I didn't do anything. I don't know what triggered him. But mm. why am I getting beat for that? I mean, your truth had an impact on his mind. And that's how it's, he relayed his feelings. Yeah. You know, but what... 
what in the world? <laughs> Again, uncovered, unprotected. You know what did I mean? Did you ever tell anyone, when it, when it first happened, did you ever tell anyone what was happening no one, to you? No one, no one, no one knows. Till today, like the only ones that know are like close, close people, not my mom, nobody knows. What did you do? I know you say that, you know, the story can, it's about how we overcome and survive and etc. But in that, when you think of that level of trauma, in that moment, how did you deal with it? You know, did you lock yourself in the bathroom? You didn't call, I know you didn't call the police or a neighbor. Like, um, how, you know, what was going through your mind? Even the aftermath of, of what happened. At 15, I don't think you're even able to quite grasp because again my father though he was never around never put his hands on me mm -hmm. okay yeah. so trying to comprehend what in the world is going on mm. I love me to sleep like I don't what, yeah. is, what are we in and then I'm I was leaving upstate to come to New York City so I'm totally miles away. I'm, 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 this is where I am. So I just, one day, I got up, the nerve packed up, me and my daughter pregnant with my wow. daughter, and I ran off, and that was that. that was and that. you was at, what, what age were you then when you left? I was 17. And then again, we tried again, and then we were trying to do it back again, but then that's when the abandonment happened. I came back. But so the domestic now, violence was with the same man that went up to another state to, yeah. okay, so maybe God sent him there not to come back, girl, for a you reason. You hear me? You hear me? Uh, no. So let's not call it abandonment. That's saving. <laughs> girl, God sent his ass all the way to the next state and keep his ass there for a reason. Love you. God bless you. This ain't personal. This is my truth. Yeah. And okay, so that was your first experience. Have you encountered any other experiences with domestic violence with other men in your in it your was journey? The first and the last time. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. I'm yeah. glad to hear it. <laughs> do you think that do you think as young come. as you were, okay, as young as you were, and I know you say at fifteen, yeah. you know, here's what I think. I think depending on how you're made and what your calling is, or whether it's vibrational, ancestral, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. I was very in touch with myself from 11 and 12. I just didn't have the dictionary articulates, you know, words to put to it. But I knew myself from very young. I was very aware of myself, yes, you know? And so I would love to know, like, how did that experience, the whole experience, um, in terms of impacting your life now as a woman at this stage, what would you say, ha I mean, has it impacted your life? I feel, and I always say this, it's made me compassionate. It makes oh, me wow. people. It makes me, I don't judge nobody. And a lot of times people don't, uh, hi guys, hi everyone. Thank you so much for every comment. God bless you guys. I acknowledge everybody in the comments. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, it's made me look at people and not judge the person who's doing this or that. Because a lot of people be like, oh, they go that hole right there. They but, the there. Truth, but the truth is, this, let me tell you this, and this is, this, is, this is what I call facts. When the Bible says, or whatever says, thou shalt not judge, it's because we all do judge. Everybody judges. If you look up the word judge, it just means strong opinion. So mm -hmm. this is right. Like the minute you walk up the street and you see a donut, you've judged it. You see someone in good shoes, you've judged it. A positive or negative judgment. You walk into an interview, there's a reason why you, you go there presentable, because you will be judged. Oh, yes. So we opinion, all judge. Opinion. So the difference is condemning. Condemning someone condemning is what you don't someone, want to do. Yes, I don't condemn. I don't condemn. But we all judge. judge. And you I don't know, mind being let's, judged. Let's, let's, let's change it into opinions then. We all have yeah. our opinions. But I, I don't form my opinions on people and move and snub them. I can look yeah. at you, what a beautiful, if I have nothing, in other words, if I have nothing positive for you, there's nothing for me to say to you. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to judge nobody based off of what they're doing or none of that. So long as there's no yeah. children being hurt in the making of anything, children yes. are being raped, children are being killed and abused. Yeah. Have at it because God is our judge. And that's what I mean. 
And I really mm. mean that from my core. I will not judge nobody because I really think everyone needs to let live. Live and yeah. let live. You, you have your experience. You don't learn like I do. Four plus three mm -hmm. is seven, but so is six plus one. And we're not going to always agree on a thing. But we're all trying to get somewhere. We're all trying to become something. The best version of ourselves is what I hope that is. So I don't want to be in your way trying to look down on you. I have too many of my own struggles daily. It took, mm -hmm. today was one of those days. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't want to lift the cover over my head. I don't have yeah. time to judge you. I'm trying to yeah. judge me. What do exactly. I do Come on now. Person? Yes. That's what is important to me. So when I judge, the critical judging that I do is me, surely too. On yourself, 100%. And that's what I call, when we speak of relationships, which is the topic of the century, it will never go away. As long as we have life, it'll always be, you know, relationship from its personal, family, whatever. The one you have with yourself is where it begins. Yes, the one you have with yourself will trans. It's like us, like us being the roots and we are the tree stump every other vessel and branch is going to extend so the most important one is the one i have of myself and that's why i always say whether i'm single uh, married or other i always date myself yes yes yeah learn to date yourself even if you've got someone because then it will show you the standard you set for yourself versus what you put up with from other people yes ma'am yeah <laughs> and sometimes i'm a terrible date to myself that's the process. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know it's what I mean? Truth. You're being so it's the truth. Nervous. Yes. It's the We're truth. Terrible. We are terrible to ourselves. Mm. Like, hey, you're mm -hmm. so beautiful. Hey, you're so great. And then you walk past someone and say, damn, my stomach is fat. Oh, look at my acne. Oh, my hair ain't growing. Oh, this, mm. that. Be ginger. Be loving. Be forgiving. Mm. Mm. And that's how the domino effect happens. When you begin to walk gingerly, talk gingerly to yourself, look at yourself mm. in, the, in the hues or in the lenses of what he <laughs> or whoever you believe in looks mm. at you, you can see other people. You can have compassion for them. I don't hate mm. nobody that's done me wrong. I don't hate mm. nobody. I don't like what they've Then you are a phenomenal woman if you carry such lightness in your spirit after different things that you've experienced. To God be the glory. Go. To God be the glory. Yes. That's how you have um, orchestrated the feelings that we've discussed so far before we get into the next stage of our conversation and how you, how have you let things go? And it appears to be so easily, but I, clearly I know the journey couldn't have been. You know, no. so how have, how have you done that? By, again, just like we spoke of just now, mm -hmm. being honest with me. How many mm -hmm. people, you know, a lot of times we're the ones that we, we think that we've been hurt, but who, who have I hurt along the way? I, I may not have intentionally went to hurt them, but who mm -hmm. have I said something negative about? Who did I, who did I snub unknowingly, unwittingly? Who, when I was a little girl, I was being bullied extensively, so I started to bully too. And I made it my business to call everyone that I bullied and apologize. So it is my mission to make sure. That's that amazing. Look, don't bully nobody. Because it comes back to you. I, I, so was that, was that a case at the time of like, you know, the hurt Queen Liberati hurting other people because you were hurt at the time? And this was way before I was hurt by romanticism. Okay. This is me being a, a kid abandoned by dad, sexually abused. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being mm -hmm. passed around like somebody's 40 or blood as a That's child. That's right. I would like to touch on that a little bit if you're happy as well touch before on, we go. Touch on, touch on. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> whoever's listening, if you've been through anything, then you know you can survive. I'm still standing. You can't not. You can't take love from me. That's mm -hmm. what they asked my love. You can't take that. So you done took my this. You done took that. But you can't mm -hmm. find the stash in me. You trying to find where my love is stashed at. Mm -hmm. You can't take that. I'm a smile anyway. I'm a love. Anyway. Would you? Would you say? Would you say that you are? <laughs> in the stage of survival or in the stage of overcoming? I'm definitely both. Okay. I, I overcome, I survive. Living is my survival. Living, because mm. I also try to commit suicides. There's so many layers. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get into the layers, but I'm just, I'm just unraveling you real slow. This, this, All this, right, this, so let's, let's jump into some, let's jump into the other side then. Let's, let's touch on, you mentioned yourself, the sexual abuse. Can you, 
are you willing to share with us um, at what stage and age that this all began? So I always get the ages crazy to me. I'm looking at the ages like six through nine is fuzzy. It's okay. a fuzzy time. Yeah. But six through nine is what I remember. Because I remember mm -hmm. going to school and I was, I would have kids at the, at the, uh, at the lunch table listening to me as I pinned, I would write, I would, I would read to them what I've written. And it was mm -hmm. all Harlequin romances, erotica, at nine years old in third grade. Oh, wow. You, know, you were exposed. Class. Yeah, clearly. Mm. And, I, and they all like, oh, I'm like, oh, my God, I got a whole audience <laughs> in third grade. <laughs> okay. Peace, everybody. Thank you for coming. So, don't worry. We'll attend to them after. I ain't going to interrupt the flow. Yes, go ahead. So you said it started between six and nine. Yeah, and a lot of so that, things to take like, that was a, a neighbor, family friend, or should we just leave it absent? I'm gonna just leave it because it's so tricky. Right. People, that. That that. That people that I refuse to hurt, like I'm, I'm in the process. I, I respect I that. that. I will express it, but I won't hurt nobody. It's okay. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So. <laughs> Hurt, then obviously definitely not well okay so we touched on that so part of that experience did you ever go and seek counseling for that um any other like maybe family support based on that experience it's only been therapy i've never go to family i love family but i've never go to them for so support. many people that i have recommended to therapy has told me that they i'm not going back it hasn't worked for me and I keep telling people, everything's not for everyone. But if you are hell bent on it not working, it's not going to work. Right. Go, a lot of people go into therapy thinking it's going to be, you know, they are not there to give you um, answers. They, I've studied it as well. So they are there to give you a room where you can express how you want to express. It's like having a knee doctor, eye doctor, toe doctor. There's therapies, there's therapists in different areas. So psychodynamic therapists work on the here and now. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, psychodynamic work on the past for why we are the way we are today. And humanistic, um, the approach is um, looking at the here and now. Yeah, and there's other layers of, of different therapists. So people say, I'm not going back. And I will say, how many have you seen? Well, I had one session or what two sessions? I'm like, okay, when the man you dated let you down or the woman you dated broke your heart, did you see another woman? Did you see another man? Okay, sure. take your ass to another therapist. Try another one. Yes, Try yeah. another one. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not for everybody, but guys, you have to understand, they're not there to give you the answers. You express yourself. If you hold back, you're not going to get, you're not going, you're not going to get anything from it. Exactly. So don't go into it thinking they're supposed to solve your problems. No, you're there to express and they will mirror what you've told them. They will paraphrase yes. back to you and you're hearing yourself. Yes. Especially when you're in denial, you know, and that's what it's there for to exercise these emotions. But people exactly. feel like, oh my God, I go into therapy, I open up and I'm, I'm a mess after. That's what happens because now you're dealing with it. But people feel like the therapist abandon them after what do you want them to do you know I, I say go i say go i love my therapist and a lot of people tell me to leave my therapist but they don't understand that my therapist <clears throat> he listens to me and he listens to me not being biased not being judgmental because a lot of people listen to respond they don't care what you're talking about there you go like, oh, there you, you go this, girl. well you need to do no he lets me Talk it out. I'm That's what he's there for. Mm. He's Let me ask you a question. How long have you been in therapy for at this point? I've been in therapy since I was a little girl because of all the issues that I've had. I've always been in therapy in school, a guidance counselors taking me out for McDonald's. Ever since I was a girl, I was in therapy because I was unique and different because I was traumatized. So I didn't handle yeah. the way every other kid in the first grade was walking around. Every other kid in first grade was walking around regular. Me, I was on some extraterrestrial time. Because let me, let me say to you, in the UK, a lot of therapy has been cracked down where you only get eight sessions unless they feel like you are a very severe case because people become attached and addicted to therapists. They can't see life without one, and that's a problem as well. So over here, 
you would get a certain amount of um, sessions offered to you unless you really need that deep, you know, long term. Fair. I don't think that's fair. Mm. I'm a but I understand why. And I kind of, I, no, like I said to you, a lot of people, it's a, okay, let me share this. And, and I don't know whether you guys have experienced this or whatever. People, the same way people can be attached to friendships and relationships. Remember, connection and attachment is two different things. Often people mistake connection, attachment for connection, okay? So then people then have that attachment to a therapist, even if they fully exercise and they now don't want to live without the therapist. That's an issue. I can see why that's an issue. But that's, a, that's, that's one perspective because no matter how addicted you are to exercising, you need physical therapy. When you go to the gym, you're not going to stop going to the gym until maybe you can't go to the gym anymore. Uh, but, but here's the difference. I hear you, but let me tell you the difference. The gym is an independent movement. A therapist, remember, okay, me going to the gym or you going for a spa, it's, a, it's an independent solo movement. And then you get those people who say, Oh, I'll start gym if my friend comes with me. I always tell people, get it together. Don't rely on anybody. Get it together. Exactly. Yeah? Because if your friend don't go, you won't go. And that kind of nonsense. So if a therapist, I'm not, it's definitely not for me to say how long someone should have it for. But what I'm saying is I understand why they've made these changes. Um, because, you know, it is a dependency. Like they literally don't realize a lot of people that you are now dependent on another attachment and it's your therapist. Well, that's because you're looking at it in that way. If you're attaching mm. yourself to anything, anything mm. without moderation is extra. Anything we do, whether you're drinking mm. too much water, it's too much. We, water mm. is a necessity, but you could drink too much water. Eating is yeah. a you can you can do do it. You can it to exercise an issue. So how long would someone, imagine someone's having a therapist. You've gone there with, let's say, two issues that you're focused on, yeah? How long do you think that someone should be able to go to that same therapist? One year, two years, three years, I, you know? I, I think forever. I think forever, forever, forever as long Oh, as wow. The reason I think that is mm -hmm. because, to me, I'm not attached to my therapist. But my therapist yeah. is a friend of sorts. He's my yeah. own thing. Like, I don't share my therapist. I don't have to yeah. ration that out. That's the time mm -hmm. that I fractioned out for myself. Mental mm -hmm. therapy is something that is everlasting. It's not mm -hmm. even if you stop mm -hmm. the therapy, it's everlasting. Mm -hmm. I need to be, yeah. I need to eat to live every day until they yeah. in my casket. I need my mind to be right every day. Mm -hmm. I deal with suicidal ideations. I deal with ruminations. Sometimes mm -hmm. I can't go to you because you yeah. want to just be like, well, girl, I don't know you. You need a new so you feel for you, therapy would be a lifetime thing that you go to for you. Period. Period. Wow. Okay. Well, well, that's that's you know the most important thing is acknowledging what we need. Yeah. So you know if that's what you feel you need. Then by all mm -hmm. means, you know. But I mean, some people take it to the, to God. Some people decide they're gonna you know use the sound bowl and have their own healing. Some people go into nature. But I do exactly. think therapists so tend to want to help you to be independent minded after those sessions and not be committed to them long term but in America maybe it's different there but as I said I think I understand your perspective mm -hmm. it's a total different system here and I think it's to each yeah other. definitely because, because you can't tell somebody what they need you can't tell you can't them. do that that's right yeah, you can suggest right. you can suggest you know, yeah friend, yeah I'm my only friend I tell them all the time I'm like you're my only and then you know we I speak to them 45 minutes twice a uh, twice a week. I was like, we only really get like two hours a year. You know that. 45 minutes <laughs> twice a year. It's two hours for the year. Come on. Do you do it by do you do it visualization or do you go into the office? I used to do it in the office, but now we just do it over the phone. So you would recommend therapy to you'd be I mean I'm a, I'm an advocate of it. I really am. Um, you know, but so you'd recommend that for the yeah, okay. Do you all want right. mental abs? Do you want mental Yeah, abs? all right. Muscle? Yeah. yeah, I hear you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I don't have my 2020 vision. I'm gonna try and see some of them. I normally have my glasses with me, and I've been moving around so much today that I don't know which handbag I left it in. So, let's go to some of the comments. You have some refreshments, take a minute, and then we can hit up your next poem, okay.
Okay, no problem. Thank you. Oh, that was so amazing. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what we can both see. Shout out to everyone on the live right now. Yeah, let me let me get a few comments in whilst Miss Queen Liberati. <laughs> Liberati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> having her pot of tea, having her pot of tea. Yeah, our private joke. She knows what that means. <laughs> she says about Londoners that say, having tea. Let yeah. Pot of tea, please. Wait, look. I'm having my tea now, love. Look, I'm having my tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I should have got that tonight. I think, you know what? Normally I get turned up on a Friday. I haven't done that for the last seven months, so I don't know what's happening to me. But let me you. find some Good comments, for yeah? Good for you. Firstly, big up um, Substance on the live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. She's also another artist um, in the dance hall field. You might want to follow Substance because you telling me you like dance hall, you love all that. Love and Substance is a dance hall artist. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, Wordplay. Um, he's saying that you oh the comments have disappeared I don't know why it does that these days like when I go to slide it down it disappears <laughs> I'm gonna spit a piece Mr. One on One Poetry he's not playing with us we need to spit a piece for One on One Poetry <laughs> don't leave you, 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 you really supported us tonight shout out to yeah. Mr. One on One Mr. I'm just going to say right now because I'm having a difficulty he's like being able to scroll the comments when I scroll it then starts disappearing I can see names I can see cheese on the live I can see Elizabeth's on there yeah that's here in the UK you're saying Elizabeth maybe you're referring to the therapy and the lim you know the, the restrictions around in London yeah I believe Lola might be on the live what's happening um uh, and you say even then most therapists cannot relate to the content I know someone who claims just a quick side note real quick before we move on who is a therapist who says she only does for black clients for me it makes no difference but I guess in terms of like what Elizabeth is mentioning in terms of not relating perhaps there's some ancestral vibrational kind of conversations where you might want someone from the same um, cultural background or whatever but the reality is I don't need a therapist to be to have gone through what I've gone through I don't I don't need them to I don't want anyone to emotionally connect to me like that that's my therapist I'm going to be honest with you. Otherwise, it becomes biased. Like, I've been through that girl, you know. So it depends on what you need. I think go for what you need. That's really important. As long as we're growing through the process. Exactly. You know, as long as we're growing through the process. But I think that's, that's, thing, that's the thing of human beings. We want people to be able to relate. And I wouldn't want anyone to relate to some of the heartache I've been through. I want you to never have gone through that, to be honest. You know, so... Yeah, poetry is your therapy, William says. It is. Peace, it is. peace out, Devon. Hi. Hello, my lovely. Yeah. And we got um, Liberati's daughter on the live. How you doing? Woo! Next piece. Yeah, it's woman serious. Okay, get into it, girl. What's it called? Huh? And what yeah, I'm trying to see because I usually go on there and I spit my raw stuff. Stuff. That yeah, I, I want raw. Give it to me. You want it raw, so I'm gonna go with the raw. I'm gonna go with war time or praise for show. Praise for show because I always end my writing whatever the last sentence is. Be the last. That's my title. Okay. So go for it. Yo, it's war time. The era of conflict. It's a fuel to the end, a fight to the finish. I'm here to diminish this flesh, better yet conquer it, vanquish, subjugate my arch nemesis, killing its deeds, defeating its purposes. I'm taking no prisoners, huh? It's a coup d'etat for all you listeners. Back in the days, we were nothing but parishioners, toting the Bible, but didn't have the word in us. Now we're loaded with verses of scriptures in our mental edifice. Pictures still in our brains, remembrance, nothing but images of a bloody crucifix. Christ giving up the ghost of us. I'm on the front lines of my rhymes. I've been given the deadline to give the enemy a minor flat line. Leave him on the ground for dead. No survival, 
Come bag it up, this flesh that on arrival. Me, myself, and I, yeah, my biggest rival. I'm here to live this life for Christ. My time is borrowed. No time to waste. Live the day, pray for tomorrow. Yesterday is gone, so my present gotta be more than sorrow. So joy, I go after like crack actin' it, go after crack when they can't kick the habit like Pookie and New Jack Joy. I gotta have that love. I gotta show that picture first, Nick, like go back. God's original, no copies, no duplicates, like no facts. Without Christ, I beat the press, swallow my bottles of Prozac. Pulling out my hair bald like Kojak, it's an emergency. I'm running for my life like Cole Black. My heart was ripped apart, but God placed that back in my chest cap. Without God, I'm broken. With Christ, there's nothing in this world I can't have. Matter of fact, I don't even need to ask. He gave me to get the gas. So while other cats are flowing, I'm a flow rain. Tsunami type metaphors, lyrical type hurricanes, putting cats mm -hmm. for show shame, praising God's for show name. Thank you. Home. Amen. Mm. <laughs> what inspired that piece? You know, what inspires these I'm gonna people? I'm going to give you a love heart because you just, this girl just like, she's a rapper, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Like, this is not a regular poet. You just eat the mic like you are a dude, like rapper. I love it. I love it. Go and on. I, <laughs> I think that's what it is for me. Because mm -hmm. with all the things that I've been doing as a woman, mm -hmm. my heart bleeds for men. And I Ooh, love men. That's, I that's love actually men. a bar. That's a I bar, right? Men. You say that's that. True. I love them. So everything I do, I have two twin boys and I a set of twin boys that rest in peace. They're dead, but God bless them. My miscarriage, all, all the glory to God for those. My heart bleeds for the men because as a black woman in this world right now, we are to the world, the scum of the earth. Whether they want to say it or not, they say it, but they don't say it. So wow. More, Let's get into that a little bit unexpectedly. What makes you think that we're seen as the scum of the world or the earth? Because we're the most powerful beings on the planet Earth. We've nursed the world. We've nursed the world mm. as black mm. And I mm. love everybody. And it's not taken away from all the beautiful white women that I love and all my beautiful friends from all other races. But as a black woman, I understand right well that I'm a queen and that I birth kings and I birth queens. And my kings are being treated as dumb. And so mm. I come at it like a beast. You know the woman is the hunter in the in, 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 in the animal kingdom. No, we but me and you are very alpha female on energy, but that's not every woman. It what I mean, woman. you know, that I never deny that I'm 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 a, I'm an alpha female. That's why I'm so I that's the reason why I love very uh, masculine alpha male, but that's not for everybody, you know? Yeah, I need an alpha male. I can't have no other Yeah, alpha I can't be, yeah. Alpha. I, you won't see me. I, I'm yeah, lying. I'm the one mm -hmm. with her baby in her mouth, making sure it's he or she is safe. That's me. I'm mm -hmm. dangling my baby. That's me in my mm -hmm. mouth because I'm bringing it to mm -hmm. peace. I'm bringing it to refuge. So that's the kind of man that I love, and I'm fighting for the 100%. Mental. masculine. <laughs> but I, spend, mm -hmm. I want a man's attention. I want them to know we no, out here. We definitely do. I reckon if people like the two parts of the world were still here, they'd be like, whoa, we got to sign her. She crazy on the mic. Like, I'm telling you, like, you are mm, not a regular poet. And Mr. Uh, Washington says, thank you, Queen. Yeah. And big up Mr. Barrett. Hey, Chris. All right. So let's talk with, as we're basically now doing poetry in and out of a conversation. Sorry, can I just say my blood sister? Because my blood sister said, just log in, supporting my blood sister, Queen Liberati. Great conversation. Mental health, important topic. Yeah. More discussions on it. Keep supporting big me. Big up your peeps. Ebony Dorville, that's my that's my blessed sister, that's my baby sister. And oh, so hi! This, this opportunity to be on here with another queen who is eye to eye with this, you know what I mean? This is not just a poetry session. This is beyond that for me. This is not even a poetry session, and it, it's you know like there's times where I have entertainment nights every now and again, but this is about having real conversation, real soul connecting, whilst bringing in what you love to do, and that's poetry. Yes, so yes. a little bit later, a tiny little bit later, as we draw towards a very slow close, we're gonna go into like your writing and what, what, takes, you know, what, what inspired you to start and all this kind of stuff. So let's touch a little bit now on the last part of the conversation, which is post-trauma. Now we've touched on elements that I think 
could be seen as post-trauma. But I know you also mentioned about visiting institutions or things like that. Do you want to fine tune that bit of your journey and what first, um, what first create, what situation created you to visit your first institution? If that's the right word that you call it in states. Um, post traumatic uh, trauma and institutions. Twelve years old it was my first time being instituted. I was instituted for like two years, back and forth. And I remember one time. I walked back to the institution. It was six miles. Would that be class of, I don't want to call it, um, would that be called like a mental hospital? And it's a harsh it term, but in London, hospital. I would call yes, it London. Mental, yeah. Mental institution. Okay. And I remember walking back to it. Why? Because they lock all the doors. Mm -hmm. They locked every door. Though it was an institution, that was the safest I ever felt in my life. Because all the doors were locked. And I knew that they had to get to this person, that person, this person, and they couldn't get into me. Now, there was other stuff going on in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was fighting for my life in there as well, but I wasn't fighting all the stuff mm -hmm. that I left behind. And mm -hmm. the traumas that I faced as a child, you know, we don't always address trauma. No, Some we don't. Trauma, you know, your, your mother dies or your father dies or your baby dies and you don't talk about it. You don't you just, say nothing about it. Mm -hmm. You lock it mm -hmm. up in there. Mm -hmm. And then one day you start screaming, ripping off your clothes in the middle of the street out of nowhere. Why? Because now you're addressing Implode the to explode. Mm -hmm. Now you're ex exploding. And mm -hmm. I exploded. What, what was your... Um, I know we're in a flow and I would not normally interrupt a conversation to address anyone in the inbox, but your baby girl just said, thank you for allowing mom to do this. And I need to thank her also for being here with mom. So love to okay. you. Yeah. And you're so welcome. <laughs> yeah. Carry on mom. <laughs> As I would say. Okay. So Yes, I know, that's beautiful. I, I, had to, her I, here I, either. I had to, I saw it and I wanted to hold it and Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We love you, Tay Twirl. Tay Twirl's <laughs> all alive. So when you say things like taking off clothes or screaming, is that what happened to you? Did you have an ep um, like a mental episode? What did yeah, that look like? I had a lot of mental episodes. I was doing all kinds of things. Screaming give us some of the give us some of the symptoms of what that looked like for you or to I'm, others. I'm a teenager or a preteen. I'm fighting in school. You know what I mean? I'm fighting boys, too. I'm not just fighting. I'm fighting boys. You know, I'm asserting myself. I am uh, being despicable. I'm being despicable. I'm being despicable. Mm -hmm. Because any attention is better than no attention. Because the attention okay. that I wanted that was bad. Mm -hmm. I, I told mm -hmm. my mother crazy, and if she's watching, I'm mean, sure she's not, but I still want mm -hmm. my mom for being the patientest person in the world. And patient mm -hmm. is not even a word, I guess. But I, mm -hmm. she was patient with me because all the love and attention that I needed from my dad, I made my mother pay for it. I mm -hmm. made my mother suffer for it. She's the one that has to come to school and get me when I'm doing all these disgusting things, mm -hmm. trying to get attention because my dad wasn't there. I'm 45 years old, and even in this, I want my dad. I want my yeah. dad. Yeah, whenever so oh, you need to be honest with that, you see what you just said. I would love to salute you because there's such an embarrassment um, about age and what we need. I remember saying to even my sibling, even my mom in her seventies may have needed her mom to say A, B, and C before her mom passed away. It doesn't matter how old you get. Of course, we survive it. We carry on. We numb it sometimes. But you may need that that hug that you never got, and you may be eighty, and that could be a life changer. Yes. So I'm glad you said that. I'm really pleased you said that. And you mentioned your age and, and what you need even now. It's a beautiful yeah. thing to own that. And I, I relate. But I relate, by the way, on a personal level. I relate. I really do. And I love you for that, you know, and I love you for oh. the platform because one thing we're not candid with, especially, again, I bring it all back to us being black people. You know, yeah. black people and stigma and black people and what we need. We're the most prideful group of people. Everybody and else. Too, and too prideful sometimes as well, right? Too prideful sometimes. It's sick. It's sick. Oh, it's, yeah, just say what you need. Say what you mean. Say what you need. And yeah, let's stop pretending that we have to live up to whatever people think. But we do. We do it. We do. 
We do. It is a you create this so far that you you know you when you're off the camera, make sure you're living your real self because it become you know one big act really. So just let's just be. I'm honest with it. You know, I'm not where mm. I want to be right now, and I still want to impact people from where I want from where I yeah. Want. Because a lot of times we're waiting to be perfect to start dialoguing and conversing. I'm not perfect. If I show I'm you so right past that as well. around, probably wouldn't even want to hear me. But I'm not going to allow my my circumstances to define me. I'm not. Yeah. Perfect. I'm living in whatever they could call a squalor right now. I'm nowhere where I know I am supposed to be. I'm a queen. And a queen yes. who changed, yes. who's going through a situation. I'm going through a situation, but the situation is not who I am. And I refuse to be yes. silent because in my silence, other people die. A hundred percent. Do me a favor. So I would like to so people can home in a little bit on that experience that you had in regards to the institutions. What was it like in an institution, especially at that age? What was the experience like for you? Uh, wow. There was other levels of abuse in there. Um, Such as? More sexual abuse. Mm, you experienced that in the institution? In the institution mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But then it also showed me how to be fully uncovered and how to now stand up. It taught me how to stand up. Like, I'm not afraid of nothing in this world. Mm. I just don't know what the other side is. So I fear death only because, not because I fear death itself. I fear going to hell. <laughs> That's it. Wow. I don't fear death. Because death is- That's my greatest fear. I know. Death, my great, death, yeah. Life, death is a part of life. And I, I'm, I accept death. That's why I don't want to die full. I want to die empty. I want to give all my gifts. That's why I'm not waiting to be perfect. If I yeah, perfect. that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. But let me take you back one more time. Whilst you were in the institution, did they give you medication? They did. They did anyone me. explain to you what was happening? Did you share a room with anyone? Was you by yourself? Like, let us know what it's like. So I was sharing, I that's shared really a room important. with a couple of women. I shared a room with a couple of women. Different. It changed it around. I was the youngest person in the institution. Because um, it was an older institution, but I was an emergency crisis. And mm -hmm. so they put me in there with 18-year-olds and up. So leave that to your own imagination. And mm -hmm. so I was uh, 12, 13 when I went into the institution. And then um, they put me on Prozac. Prozac. Hi, Ethan She, God bless you. Thank you for coming in. They put me on Prozac. Progress, infamous photos. Oh, my God. God bless you. Uh, Prozac is a depression. Yeah, I know of it. So, so um, how many times did you go back and forth to the institute? I was Can you in the hear institute me? For months. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I was in the yeah. institute for months at a time. Months okay. at a time. And so, I didn't get out of the institution until I was in like the ninth grade. I went when I was in like the seventh and came out fully in the night. Did and, they diagnose uh, anything specific? Diagnosed me, well, what they've diagnosed me as of, since I've been going to my therapist now, as of post-traumatic stress disorder and okay. really strong chronic depression. And, mm. um, you know, I deal with suicidal ideations and stuff like that. But do you still experience those those feelings now? I of course. Of course, and that's mm. why I act the way I do. I live out loud every day because I'm a victorious person. I'm a champion because it takes a lot for me to get to up on you. here and talk to you. Mm. Like, I fight. Like, you might not think I'm fighting, but just to talk to you today, I'm victorious. Mm. I'm a champion. No, me too. Like, that's why I can't wait to do, to do uh, you know, interviews like where I'm the guest because I've got so much to share. Me too. People just don't realize. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. It takes a lot for people, like, I guess, me and you, depending on where we're coming from or what our isms are and what those insecurities could be. And they don't well, even congratulate, know. They don't congratulate know. That. When was the last time you went to an institute? Institution? Institution, yeah. I, the last time I was in an institution was at 14. 
This is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. You've been okay. okay. I'm a living yeah. miracle. I'm a living oh, miracle. Amazing. I'm a mm. champion. I've been living. Like, this is what I'm talking about. When I tried to kill myself in 1996 in June, can't remember the day, and I tried to mm. kill myself in that room, and God spoke to me. I don't know who you serve. I don't know who anybody else serves. This yes. Yeah. God spoke to me and told me, don't hang yourself. He said, your life is going to be better. Not perfect, but better. Mm. I deal with suicidal ideations every day, but I help more people every day than I do killing myself. That's amazing. I'm did you go here. as far as making the, the, the loose? Did you, how far did you go with I was, the idea of it? My daughter came, my, my daughter, my sister came mm. into the room and I said goodbye to her. I went mm. into the closet to try to hang myself. And as I was making my noose, I was making my noose, preparing my little bow down. I was preparing I my little I can't with you, girl. Come on. <laughs> I laugh now because I'm still I, here. I, I, can't, I can't not to laugh. It's the way you're saying it. Go on. You're cute. You Go feel on. me? Mm. I went to tie my noose all perfectly in desire because it's one thing when you have the ideation. It's another mm. thing when the thought and the idea and the Connect. actions come together. At 18 years old, the thought, the action, the idea was together. They synchronized, and I was like, okay, it's time to say hello. Goodbye and hello to what I thought would be. Mm. And God mm. said, do not do that. I have a better life for you. You know how many people? I, I, there was a woman that was going to jump off my one of the buildings, 17 floors, because mm. her boyfriend left her. Every time she sees me, I don't care if she's across the street on a bus, she's hopping off the bus. Hugging me, loving me. Why? Because she's still here. Another guy was about to jump off the train. I took him all the way to the hospital. I didn't know him mm. when guy. And I took mm. him all the way to the hospital. That's what I do. I help to save I'm other people through compassion. Mm. May I ask you one last question about that before we get closer to a close? When you were going to do that and you heard that prominent voice, which you know was your creator, okay, uh, can you share what was it at that stage of your life that triggered that that right there? What happened? Or was it a collage of things that um, no. that made you think, you know what, fuck this, that's it? It was a fuck this moment because my right. mom, I was 18 years old, two kids out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. My mom, my favorite person on the planet Earth. Anybody watching, keep be, be, be talk nice about my mom. Don't judge my mom because of nothing I'm about to say. That's my mom. Be make make sure uh, you don't talk crazy about my mom. But she was tired. Remember, she's a single mother, a woman taking care of all these children too. Remember her plight. So I come in the first time I ever left my children for two days. I've never left my kids. I'm always with my kids. I'm 18 years old. Yeah. I go out and I get stuck at a party and I'm out. So I come home two days or maybe a day later. I can't recall. So it's probably a day because I don't like to be without my kids. So okay. it's a day, and I come home late, and she's like, you know, and she's Haitian, she's Caribbean, so interpreting what she's saying as a Caribbean woman in English sounds harsh. It's harsh, you know. She's like, I don't want to tattoo. This is Creole, not station. Go through yourself in the train station. She's so mad because I can understand it as a mother. I'm so mad that. I want to kill you. Yes, go throw yourself on a train station. I'm scared to death. My baby could be dead. Go kill yourself because at the end of the day, you got me thinking you're dead anyway. You feel me? So she said, mm. I internalized it in a different way. And then mm. my grandmother, rest in peace, I gave her some shoes to go back to Haiti. She came to visit my mother at that time and she said, I don't want nothing from evilness like you. So mm. when when she said that. It's okay. Bring it. Let it flow. You feel me? Like, those are the matriarchs. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of damn. Mm -hmm. The matriarchs have spoken. Because you know when the mother speaks, it's different. The matriarchs mm -hmm. spoke. Mm -hmm. And so when they said it, it was synchronized. I was worthless. Mm -hmm. There was no point. Mm -hmm. So... I went in the room and I said, you know what, this is done for. What am I here for? Mm. And I had two beautiful daughters at the time. I said they'd be better off without me because who wants any evilness from me? And so when I went to hang myself, God said no. Mm. 
because he saw the worst of me. Mm. And mm. Then, oh, Yo, don't make my makeup. Yo, my, don't let my mascara start running now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he saw the value in me. Mm. He saw the worst. He saw the worst. Mm. And I knew that at that moment that life wasn't going to get better. It wasn't always going to mm. be, you know, roses. But love is bigger than pain. Love is bigger mm. than go through. Love is bigger than victimization. Love mm. is bigger than rape. You are not the sum of what you've been through, but the sum of the love you give to this world. I'm mm. here to impact the world with my love. And you can't take that from me. Take it all. Right. You can't mm. take that. I dare you to try. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't apologize for this. I no, never do. I like to laugh a lot, so. Take a, take a moment. Take a moment. Um, sip on some water. Never apologize. I don't, I've always, I've always said, why do we apologize when we express? We do, even to friends. I'm sorry. And I like, why am I apologizing? But this is what I do this for. This soul connectivity, not just another live or podcast, whatever people do. I'm about my gift is soul connectivity. These are my favorite type of lives because it's real talk. Amen. Yeah, and if you get me feeling teary eyed, I'm like, dog makeup. There's a holy from a star on his eyes, girl. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, I, God, yeah. Mm. I'm so glad that that spirit of discernment came to you in that moment. I'm so glad that in that moment you were obedient to the voice and you're here with me right now because you blessed me by being here today. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and Oh my God, you are a force to be reckoned with. Thank you. You really are. You ain't no punk. <laughs> Girl, you. you're serious out here. You ain't no punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better not time because you're going to come for Queen. Like, she, she's, she's, a, she's a serious chick. Don't play with me. I love it. Yeah. Let me say this before we go to a really beautiful close. Is there anything that you want to say in regards to your story and any elements that I haven't fulfilled or I haven't, yeah, that you want to come back and share in this moment? Let's hear it. What have I missed? What would you like to say? Is there anything? I would like to say that in all the things that I've exposed, my truths, the pain, the heartbreak, the post-traumatic, depression, anxiety, suicide, mm -hmm. the love that I possess is bigger than all of it. And to, not allow, to never allow those things, hi sis, to never allow those things to keep you from being your best self. Because they excuse, yeah. they explain, but they don't excuse. Yeah, I've been raped, but I'm not going to go rape nobody. Yeah, I've been <laughs> abandoned, but there's no need to abandon my five kids. There's no excuse to go yeah. do to people the things you don't want done to you. Yeah, oh, you my God, yes. Yeah. But you have to see the pain, now be the very change you want to see. Never yes. allow those things to excuse you to give up on your family go raping yeah. people, go hurting people. And if you've hurt people, reconcile, apologize, mm -hmm. be 10 toes down, tell people I'm sorry. Make mm -hmm. sure you treat people with the respect that you want given. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And just as I return back to the comments, my friend Chi says, I love the real enough, hang on, enough love for you and love sharing, you. teaching. Yeah, is this, yeah, a hundred percent. I love you. Yeah. Now I'm going to touch on what you love to do as we definitely draw to a close, which is you're an artist, you're a writer, you're a performer, you're a poet. Okay. And a motivational speaker and so much more. What age did you start writing poetry? How young were you when you started using it as your expression and your therapy and everything else? I'm going to say, I think it's nine years old when I was writing those Harlequins. And I felt, because I always say that I use poetry to cry. That was my mm. way of crying. My way of 
express oh, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can go to everybody. I can speak to everybody, but I can always tell the truth on paper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might not listen, and it's not your fault. I don't hold anyone in contempt. I just yeah. that's me being honest with myself and being able to see myself on paper. And mm -hmm. it's not as scary as when you write it, the truth. When you confront your truths, you're able to deal with them better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because now I'm in control. I'm writing it down. 100%. 100%. So do you perform a lot? Or I know you've recorded um, as an artist. Can we anticipate any an, a poetic EP from you in the future? I definitely am working on something with my friends, Isaac. Isaac Auguste, we have a little song out. It's on his album. Nice. Once we're done with his album, we're going to be working on my album, my poetic album. I also am an author, so you can find my book on Amazon, Queen Liberati. But you didn't I'm tell me about that, girl. Yeah, I'm an author as well. Um, so what's What's your book about? Is it poetry? It's a journal entry of my weight loss journey because I was 320 pounds. And oh, then nice. So it's my weight loss hundred. My back after this show, and I can I can pin everything to the post. That would be amazing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, when did you publish it? You know, I published it in 2016, but I did that because I've always wanted to write a book. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, you know what, my sister, big ups Judy Tuzin, um, my sister is one of the most amazing people. And I have my sisters on the line. Claire, I love you. Ebony, I love you. Everybody who's my family, I love you. And everybody who's not, I love you too. Um, but my <laughs> sister, Judy, she's prolific. And she's on here as just Judy Tuzin, right? This woman has gone through so much physically and health-wise. And yet she's wow. able to get her doctorate, her master's, all while being sick. All while wow. being sick. That's, that's amazing. Daughter. She wrote a book and she has an exceptional project called The Exceptional Project. And she penned her book. I said, how dare I sit around here not enduring nothing that my sister's going through and can't pen herself? So I said, as soon as she, I said, I penned it right after her because I said, no way. She has shown me that I could write a book. Just write the book. That's Get amazing. Sis, make sure you inbox me so I can interview you about your life and your book. Yeah, if you inbox me, we'll schedule you next. Got you. I'm going <laughs> to hit her and everything. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. So, would you like to share an outro poetry piece? Or, will you, or are you all breathed out and talked I'm out? Do, and... I'm going to do it because it's my favorite poem that I've been doing. Okay, bring it, girl. Let's hear your last piece of the night. It's the last piece. Before I do my piece, thank you so much, beautiful queen, for having me mm. on your platform. God bless you. Nothing Namaste. but success for you from here. Nothing but success for you. I'm real for oh, you. I thank love you. you so much. Bruce, I'm sending you an ear hug. <laughs> thank you. Receive. Hey, Miss Rosie Loves. God bless. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Um, and I love her, too. She's amazing. Link with her, too, because I'm telling you. nothing. Inbox me, out. everybody. <laughs> I'm with everybody. Good. So, um, I'm falling. I'm falling for you. I'm falling for you, baby. I'm falling for you. I love you, Clark Kent. You don't need to go inside no food because you're already my Superman. And I love you like only Lois can. We'll fight the kryptonite, baby. And when they try to keep you down, baby, I'll put you on my wings and we gon' fly. Hi, baby. I love you, Clark Kent. Love. <clears throat> I love you. Emphatically and thought with every fiber, every tendon, every sinew, every molecule of clay, every particle of dust compiled by the dirt of the ground to make you encapsulated behind skin and bones. Love, I yearn you, the real you. Not just for my redness, but I see beyond your physical being. This yearning supersedes any need for me to be just another rolling in the hay or just another freak in between the sheets. You are my Boaz. 
the man of my dreams. I yearn for the day when reverie is reality and re rever reverie is reality and reality reverie. But everything's up in my face like nose hairs, 3D, live and living color, vivid HD, because in my imagination, nothing's in black and white. In my mind's eyes, I've watched you play in my mental big screen. You are my movie. And as your audience, nothing in this world can move me. I'm your biggest fan behind the scenes, your number one groupie. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right, so sue me. This intergalactical supernatural journey movie called Life, playing the supporting role as your helpmate, your best friend, your lover, your wife, always by your side like that rip that used to reside, taken out of you so that I'd come alive, animated, in my full element, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, presented to you as a softer version of you, the weaker vessel made with delicate tissue so your head could be nestled right at my chest. Find comfort in them, ravish my breast so that your thoughts and your worries could be put to rest. It was never good for man to be alone. How soon do we forget? The Garden of Eden where we first met, I being made in your image as you slept. You and I, together, we were closer than a mother and her fetus. Is it safe to say that at one point that this rib was your fetus? You gave birth to me, not C, but side section. Purpose by design. When you see us, you see God's reflection. This love that I have in my heart for you has been placed there without my requesting. It's my God-given birthright, not a suggestion. I will love you forever. I will honor you before we ever meet. Our souls made together. I will pray for you before we ever speak. So love, wherever in this world you may be, just know that I am on bended knees daily praying that when you wake from your sleep, the good thing presented to you will be me. Love, I love you. Come. Oh, that's so beautiful. I remember hearing that when you done that on a performed it on a Mr. Washington's page, and I was like, I gotta have her on my show. I gotta have her on my show. That's your favorite piece, yeah? Yes, because it was birthed out of rejection. And, and the, 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 that's so beautiful thank you for sharing i'm gonna give you some lots of lots of love hearts of my own in the comments box that was so nice how do you feel when you're when you're performing your favorite piece and what where you know where it was birthed from etc how do you feel i feel like a champion i feel like a victor because your rejection doesn't stop me i'm still here and i have every right to speak to the universe speak to my god for what i deserve you don't want me that's I, amazing well, Miss Queen Liberati, today we have discussed heartbreak, poetry, and post-trauma. Thank you so much for gracing us with your story, your journey, your transparency, your victorious spirit, your poetry, just everything. But one last thing before you go is called After Thoughts, where I ask guest speakers to share their afterthoughts with me about their journey on being on Free Flame Thoughts, like with you tonight. What was it like for you? How was it? I thought it was one of, the, one of the most amazing experiences because, again, I'm only as good as who's in front of me. Mm. So you're a blessing, you're amazing, and you're powerful. You. And so being on your show has blessed me immensely. You have the mm. love for the people. You're compassionate. Obviously, it's paramount because you had me on here spilling out my guts. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love you. It's all about <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity and all the bless all the best to you and blessings. Thank you very much. Yes. So your beautiful baby girl before you I go, did she wanna pop on? Is she pulling up on me or is she not pulling up on me? My baby girl? Your baby girl, is she is she pulling up on here tonight? To say Are hi you and bye. Here to say hi, bye, Shanti. She's pulling up by my New York Linky, where you at? <laughs> Request to join, Sean. I'm coming right here. Only if you want to. You can jump on. Say I hi. I can't see you, pretty girl. Where you at? Hey. Hi. <laughs> she just pops her head and disappears. <laughs> I can't see your face. We didn't, but we want to see you. Oh, that's mommy's little girl. She looks so much like you. It's unbelievable. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Girl! Yes, wow! I don't want to believe it. <laughs> so tell me, so daughter, 
And yes. mother, is there anything you want to ask me before I go? Do you want to spin the tables on me on my show? What do you want to know? Um, Did I ask what, me anything? What made you want to start doing this these, show? Because yes, this, this is so provoking. It, Wait, before you answer, she, I'm going to spin off of her question. What made you want to start this show? And also, because of the levels of intensity and passion, what is it that you're really after? Aha. Uh -huh. What inspired me? Firstly, it wasn't a childhood dream, but I did grow up with the lack of communication and stuff growing up. I just didn't grow up in that kind of household. It wasn't filled with dynamic conversation, communication, emotional hugs. You know, everything else was there. And so that thirst for connection, <laughs> yeah? Are you girls all right? <laughs> Yeah, that first for connection. And so my journey has been all about um, therapy base or youth or communication, personal development. And that's been that. And then going into radio for five minutes in 2019 and then lockdown happening and building this page. Um, so my main inspiration for doing this is to invite other people to free the spirit in them that I so much was trying to do from 14. But now I've arrived. So as I've arrived, I want to ignite that arrival in others. They don't even have to know that, but that's what I'm doing. And what I want to get from them, mm -hmm. pure free-spiritedness, free-flowing energy. We love you. Uh, yes, I love you. We love you. Yes. You're yeah. Awesome. So if you want to come on here with rollers in your bed, I'll be happy because you're being yourself in that moment. Just being yourself. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you, know, you so much for all the love that you're giving. And thank you so much for free flowing yeah, thought mm -hmm. because you have tapped into another element. And I love everyone. I thank you for one on one poetry. I thank you, Mrs. Rosie Love. Mm -hmm. And I thank you so much for this opportunity because we come on. I'm a little agree with what I like to do, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah. this venue here mm -hmm. opens up the heart of things. I'm a poet, but I'm beyond a poet. There's more to me than poetry. And that's the element that you bring. And so I commend you and keep doing what you're doing. Yes. First of all, don't forget me because you're about to go all the way up. Thank you. But we're going to come, we're going to visit each other. So we're stuck with each other now. Yes. Yeah. But I love you. I love you both. Thank you so much love again, you. guys. Yes. I'm going to throw some last minute um, hugs and, and loves and everything. And I'll speak to you later. Miss Rosie, Dude. one on one. And again, thank amazing. you for having my mom on here. I appreciate it so much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Well, listen, let's keep the link. Thank you so much once again. Feel free to exit yourself. You can see a little, I don't know, a little cross or something on your left or your right. If you click on that, that will allow you to exit the show. And I'll see you ladies soon. Yes, yes. Okay. Bye. See you, daughter. <laughs> Bye. Oh, that was good, guys. That was good. Whew, thank you so much for joining us. That was so reflective. I'm going to be uh, in a very reflective mood. That was very soul evoking for me. And that's why I do it. That is going to be my consistent answer. It's about soul connectivity. It's about we all enjoy watering our ego, but no matter whether you are a rock star, poet, writer, whatever, I always leave that to last because I feel like we are so focused on our image, our visual image and our egos. And when you strip it, it's a whole different soul. So I like to do with the soul first, connect on that spirit divine level, and then talk about our handles and how great we are and what we do. So that's why I do it that way. Yeah. So guys, thank you. If anyone watching this or watching the playback wants to do a live with me, let me know it's good. Inbox me and I'll make it happen. Until then, good night. Peace and love.